Green Tree Productions is proud to present Duncanville Weekly News. It's the good news just for the city of champions, Duncanville, Texas. And now, here's your host, John Thompson. Hello world, America, Texas, and Duncanville, and welcome to this edition of Duncanville Weekly News for the last part of January 20. 19. Glad you're logged on and watching. Well, it's all hoops pretty much this show. Hi, I'm Dan Barkley. Been in Duncanville 35 years now. Uh, played football and basketball in high school. Uh, football is probably my favorite sport, but right now I'm ready for some hoops. Hoops? Did you say hoops? We gotcha hoops, right here in the hoops corner on Duncanville Weekly News with all the highlights from the latest Duncanville Panther and Pantherette basketball games and a peek at upcoming games. The hoops corner is brought to you by Jane's Memorial Chapel, Duncanville's only home-owned funeral home. And by Leon Miller Commercial Real Estate Properties on Main Street. And now in the hoops corner, Here's John with all the hoops highlights. So let's start with the Panthers right now. The much anticipated meeting with the J.J. Pierce Mustangs was Tuesday night, and it took the Panthers all of two seconds to score as Jemias' tip to Derek is passed to Micah for the dunk. And here are some folks ready for this game. The Mustangs score the next eight points, and Robert drives and kicks to Damon for two. And then Jemias nails a three-point shot. Then he's loose for a dunk. And after one, it's Pierce 16 and the Panthers 13. Early in the second, Jemias ties things with this three-point shot. And Derek hits a shot from behind that arc on the floor. Jemias again. Another dunk. Derek. Rainbow. Robert hits a three point shot. And then Micah drives the lane for two. Then he feeds Miles on a break for two. And at the half, it's 33 apiece. Jemias picks up the loose ball and scores early in the third quarter. And Micah scores in the lane. Jemias. Drives through everybody for two. And then Miles hits a rainbow. It's tied with time expiring in the third quarter, and Derek hits a three point shot to beat the buzzer. So it's 50 47 Panthers after three. In the fourth, when Miles misses this rainbow, Keon is there to rebound and score for a six-point lead. Lots of free throws the rest of the game. Micah hits a couple, and then Derek hits one. Jemias hits one with two seconds left for a two-point lead, and Final Panthers 70 and JJ Pierce 68. Jemais had 23 points. Micah and Derek had 14 apiece as the Panthers stay the only undefeated team in District 8 6A play. Friday night, those WT White Junior High Longhorns were in town late to get blasted. Yeah, 
You saw that right. Jemias tips it to the Longhorn center who was supposed to jump, but uh, Derek gets it started with a three-point effort. Micah drives and scores with a bank shot. Omari Auber is in, and he hits a shot from behind that arc on the floor. And at the half, it's 50 to 21. Miles misses the baseline drive shot, but Roberts there to rebound and score. And then Fred is in and scores on a drive. Then he hits a three-point shot. When Miles scores on this pass from Omari, the Panthers are over 100 points. Then Omari feeds Kayon for two more, and it's over. Final, Panthers 104, and the WT White 47. Derek led all the scores with 25 points. Jane's Memorial Chapel is the only family-owned funeral home in Duncanville and is proud to offer caring and dedicated services from familiar friends. Rick Jane's and his family, the owners of Jane's Memorial Chapel and Funeral Home, have served Duncanville area families in their time of loss since 1998. A beautiful and spacious chapel is offered and Jane's serves all cemeteries. When it comes to finding people you can trust in a time of need, you can turn to Jane's Memorial Chapel. No one else knows families better. 811 South Cockrell Hill in Duncanville. Tuesday night, the Panthers were at Richardson to play the Eagles, who were 3-2 and two in District 86A action at the time. And once again, the player jumping for the opposition takes the tip from Jemias. But at least he did jump. Micah had a big night and started things with this long two-point shot. Then stays behind that arc on the floor for three. Then dunks. Jemias, three. Then, just before the half, this happened. Jemias misses a dunk shot, but hangs on the rim and has another technical foul called against him. Therefore, he's ejected. So, Coach Peavy questions the call for about five minutes. Richardson scores just to beat the buzzer, and at the half, it's 48 to 30, Panthers. Derek hits a three-point shot early in the fourth, and then Robert drives the baseline, and his missed shot is put back by Miles. Then the two reverse it as Robert tips in at the miss by Miles. Oh, Micah, he's, he's still around, driving the lane for two more. Robert. Rainbow. And Damon rebounds and scores. The Panthers dribble out the last couple of minutes. Final. Panthers 91 and Richardson 60. Micah scored 36 points, Jabrian 13, Derek 12, and Jemias had 10 in the first half. Friday night, the short trip up to Molina. A short trip, but not worth it. The game started about 30 minutes late with no scoreboards. They are 5-1 and one in district play. Jemias did not play in this game. Don't know why. Early on, Damon rebounds, scores, and is fouled in the act.
Micah drives the lane for two. Then steals on the press and gets it to Miles for a snowbird. In the fourth, Damon makes a reverse layup on a baseline drive. And then Miles. Rainbow. Amari rebounds and feeds Robert. Dunk. The Panthers dribble out the last minutes of this one. Final, 87 to 21. Micah led the scores with 18 points. Keon had 17. Heading to the end of the first round, here's what District 86A looks like for the boys. After the first round of action, the Panthers are the only undefeated team in the district, 7-0. J.J. Pierce is 6-1. Skyline and Lake Highlands and Richardson, 4-3. Berkner and W.T. White and Molina are getting ready for baseball. Well, the Pantherettes ended their 115-game district winning streak last time, but they started a new one this time, and here's how. Tuesday night, the Pantherettes were at J.J. Pierce, where they are 3-2 and two in district play in third place right now. Early on, Deja K picks up a loose ball on the baseline and scores. And then Zara scores in the post. Naya hits a runner in the lane. And Kyra hits a three-point shot. When Kinley hits this shot in the lane, it's 19 to nothing. Kinley hits a runner in the lane. Angel hits a three. Deja K, Ditto. In order not to score 100 points and be criticized as being a bully, the Pantherettes hold the ball for the last couple of minutes. And as the clock and your wristwatch run down, final 95-15 Pantherettes. Deja K led five double-figure scorers with 19 points. Friday night, it was over to W.T. White and their single-only limited seating gym. And this team has actually won a couple of games, and Naya gets the first points of the game with a rainbow. Then, with a two-toned ball they're playing with in this game, Deja K hits a three-point shot. Angels turn. Three. And after one, it's 17 to seven. Pantherettes. Yeah, that's right. Their scoreboards didn't work. And then Deja K feeds Kinley for another layup. Naya. Rainbow. And after three, it's 66 to 12. Pantherettes. Kayla, three. It's over. Final, Pantherettes 78. And W.T. White, 15. Deja K had 17. Naya, 14. And Anaya, 10. Leon Miller Commercial Properties is a proud sponsor as he enjoys helping to promote our DHS athletes as no one else does. Leon owns office and retail space in the heart of Duncanville on Main Street. If you are looking for a convenient, accessible, and well-kept space for rent, call Leon at 972-709-7700. 
7181. He will fix you up. Tuesday night, the second round of District 86A game started with the Pantherettes hosting those Richardson Lady Eagles, whom they had beaten by 20 in December. Here's how Jack called it. Pantherettes 85 and Richardson 41. Deja K had 22 points, Naya 20, Zaria 15, and Kinley had 12. As the Pantherettes go to 25 and 5 on the season and 7 and 1 in district play.
Ranger in action next Tuesday night against Richardson Burner. Into the second round of action now in District 86A. Here's the girls' standings. Midway through the second round, Skyline is the only undefeated team in District 86A at 9-0. The Pantherettes are 8-1. Then you have Richardson and J.J. Pierce and Lake Collins threatening to make the playoffs. Here are the upcoming games for the Panthers and the Pantherettes. Upcoming are the Burtner Rams, Skyline, Lake Highlands, and Pierce. You can see here who the boys play and where, and the girls and where, and the times. Scheduled times, anyway. Sometimes, if you go to some of those schools, the games don't start right on time. We'll be back on or before February the 2nd with highlights of those games. As we close, last week, Celebrate Duncanville was held and the man and woman of the year were announced. And here are some outtakes from that event. Mark's been with us for a while now. He's had great success. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Smith. You know, we received several awards, Coach of the Year and several players all district and all state, but what I'm really most proud of and what I know you'd be most proud of is eight members of our football team are an all academic state honor. And we are a city of champions. A city of champions incorporating not just the athletics, but the arts, education, industry, and media. In so many, many different ways, we are city of champions, and it's such a great honor to be able to serve as your mayor over those many, many aspects of what we do in such a great way in our great town. Um, I'll jump in to say who the winner is, so I don't have to and it is Ginger Perkins. This is a great community, and I love neighbors helping neighbors. I just think it's so important. And um, the place I learned that was before I became a pastor, I used to work for Southwest Airlines, and in fact, my boss, my old boss, is here tonight. Let me tell you something about this year's Man of the Year. He's been an ambassador for Duckville, <coughs> excuse me, almost all his life. In high school, he helped lead the Duckville Panthers to a state championship. Casey, good job. Obviously, we're in Ben Franklin for almost 10 years now. It's hard to believe uh, time is flying. Uh, all time is flown, I guess. But, uh, you know, there's so many people I need to thank. I want to thank Dan and Jazz, obviously, for just giving the opportunity and privilege to come serve Dr. Bill. That was something that, um, you know, Joy and I made a decision that we wanted to come be a part of the family business, and it was a thrill to do that. And uh, I definitely want to make sure I thank my wife. She is Ben. Yeah, I'm not going to miss out on that. She is just, honestly, she's my right hand, and she is there to support me. You know, it, it, I can just sit there and say, you know, when I'm at these board meetings and staying up nights or early mornings doing stuff, she's at home with three kids and uh, doing her stuff there. And she's sitting back as well. And, and I was sitting there just kind of like big cheer there. So I just want to thank you for everything you Thank my family over there, all of my parents. Uh, they're also, man, I'm, I'm going to thank my mom because I put her to work for the last nine years at the store. She is now working for her son. I'll tell you, she'll tell you stories. But appreciate their support and like that. But, you know, I'll say this one, thank each of you. And I look across this room and I'll kind of just, you know, I see my chamber partners over here. I see businesses. I see uh, city groups, Rotary Lion, uh, Phil Lions. I see my bridge with the school district back there, with the Education Foundation, Hard Duck Bell. Our DISD Board of Trustees. Janice is not here tonight. She's not feeling well. Did she make it? Nope. No, she's shaking her head. Yeah. <laughs> she's not here tonight. She's not feeling well. Carla Fahey, are you here? Hi, Carla. Woo! Bill McKee, I love you here. Renee, you next week? All right. 